Good evening, everyone. We're getting ready to go live here in a second. Fred, I can't get my video to go. That's okay. If, if you can't get it to work, we'll manage. Sandy's saying nobody's got video. Oh, then maybe that's a button. Yeah, I, can't do, I can't do video either. Okay, hold on. Let me see if there's something here. Let's see. Events. Uh -huh. Try again. Ooh, Jason and Dan are going to be having some some words. I think. Thank you. Yeah. Whatever. It's all rigged anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the NFC's finally discovered what it's like to have uh, the NFL pushing for Tom Brady. Huh? Yeah, obviously. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click the Facebook link and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to go ahead and call this regular meeting of the Nevada City Council to order on Monday, January 25th, 2021, 6 o'clock p.m. Um, we are meeting on Zoom per the guidelines of the Iowa Public Information Board due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and can we go ahead and get a roll call, please? Brian Hansen? I uh, are here. Barb Mittman? Here. Dean Nielsen? Here. Jason Sampson? Here. Luke Spence? Here. Sandy Eric? Here. Okay, first item is uh, approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Dane and Luke, any discussion on agenda? Okay, seeing none, then we will have Karen take the vote. Nielsen? Aye. Spence? Aye. Eric? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Mittman? Aye. Sampson. Aye. Okay, then agenda is approved. Takes us in the consent agenda. Any item may be removed for separate consideration. Move for approval. Second. Sandy and Barb, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, then we will vote. Eric? Aye. Mittman? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Spence? Aye. Hanson? Aye. Okay, then that is approved. Takes us into the public forum, which is time set aside for comments from the public on topics of city business. Other than those listed on the agenda, no action may be taken. First up, we have uh, MetroNet, and I, I might have to bump them up to be able to speak here. So uh, give me just one moment. Okay, so they should be rejoining us as panelists. And then I will hand it over to Metronet to give us an update on where they're at. Oh, I know. Yeah. Now, guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is John. I know uh, Dan's trying to get on board. I was talking to him on the phone. So, um, if you didn't jump, go ahead. Hi, everybody. This is Dan Cachado. I'm the government affairs person with Metronet. John Story is the project manager for the area. Um, so, we're here to answer questions and kind of give you an update. Um, very simply, we've we've completed all our building. What's left is getting on the uh, Alliant Energy poles, and we're waiting. We've been working with them, and we're waiting for them to give us approval. There are some engineering issues that we are working with them 
to, you know, on their end. And once we get that, we'll work on the on the polls. John, do you have anything to add to that? No, it's, uh, you know, it's it has to do with the, uh, oh gosh, the slack between the polls. So they're using, what they were using was, um, they were using a, a sheet, a form, instead of going out there and actually using the poll uh, pictures provided to them. Therefore, it came up with a different degree, which made more polls fail. So now they're just going back and they're having to recompute and do things like that. And we're getting with them, with our engineers, to come up with uh, best case scenario so we don't have to go set a bunch of polls and hopefully we can get a lot more of these polls to pass. And as soon as that happens, and like we said, we're working with them to make this happen. Um, hopefully we'll have an answer, hopefully by the end of this week, on whether or not we can move forward with the uh, uh, getting the polls released back to us. So that gives you an update of where, where we're at right now. Once the polls are released, John, um, we'll start moving quickly on getting on on them and completing the the uh, the build correct yeah now it's obviously just it's weather dependent so let me just kind of explain how that that whole thing works so there's there's different things going on with these polls so if we do the make ready that means i'm i i gotta do move stuff on on the polls for people but whenever you have a failure then that means i have to go back and i have to re underground sections so now we're in the middle of the winter, the ground's frozen. It just could be a little more tedious here in the middle of the winter. We're gonna, if I can find guys to do the work, we'll continue on, but that's what we'll do. Um, but hopefully, you know, like I said, they, they work out this, these issues with the polls. We get uh, as many polls back as we can. That'll make it a lot easier if we can just build on the polls the way everything's designed already. Um, and we don't have a whole bunch of underground that we have to put in uh, try to put it in the middle of winter. So, are there any questions from anybody? Hey guys, uh, Luke Spence. What's the the time range? Best safe case scenario to worst case scenario on when we'll actually start having people connected and hooked up and ready to go. Now, I wish I could give you a better answer, but just like when I said before, it was all based on telephone balls. It's all a process. To get these things released, they release about 50 at a time. You got about 650 polls in in the beta. Um, it, you know, they may be able to release the polls to me, but then there's the make ready that happen, has to happen and all that. I'm not, I can't, I, I'm hoping best case scenario, a couple more months maybe that, you know, but it, it's the dead of winter. If, if we get nine inches of snow every other week, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough build. Thank you. Yeah, I, I I wish I could give you a, a more definite. I mean, I'll I'll get crews in here, but you know, when it's thirty degrees up in a bucket, they can only work so long and so hard. Where I would normally count on about six hundred and fifty feet a day of strand and cable, it may be only one of those six hundred and fifty feet for strand one day. You know, in this kind of weather, so um, I'll try to hire as many crews as I can get in here to do it. Um, to try to speed up, you know, we got about 200,000 feet of aerial to put up if we get all the poles back. So if you average 650 feet per crew, and if I can get at least four crews in here, it'll go fast. Um, as long as I don't have a bunch of underground, that'd be the, you know, it's just a flip flop now in the winter time. I can get on the poles, the, the snow doesn't bother me. But now if I have to underground some stuff because Poles are denied. Now it's flip flopped around the other way. Now it's me trying to get through the frost line and do all those things if the frost is driven three foot deep in the ground. So it's just a little bit different animal then, you know. Then it might be, it might take me to put concrete blankets on the ground just to be able to dig a hole to bore. So a lot of different issues the winter presents. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, and I just want to quickly introduce myself. My internet actually keeps going in and out. I have Mediacom. My name is Eric Vinke. 
I'm the Iowa market manager for MetroNet. And uh, I will, you know, be a part of things with the city launches, looking forward to bringing service to your area. Um, we've had great success across Iowa as it is. And so um, I will represent uh, MetroNet for Iowa and for Nevada once it launches. Yeah, Eric, by the way, lives in Iowa. He lives over in LeClaire. Nice to meet you, Eric, and thanks for coming tonight. Absolutely. Nice to meet you guys, too. Yeah. I hope you're a Pleasant Valley Spartan in LeClaire. That's where I'm from. <laughs> you know, originally right across from the river in Illinois, but yes, my wife and I are in the PV school district, so uh, kids in that nature will be uh, PV Spartans. Absolutely. Go Spartans. <laughs> You know, guys, this is uh, Brian Hansen, and um, the only thing I would say that's kind of disappointing me on this whole thing, and it's not me personally, well, it is me personally, um, and a lot of our citizens, that you guys have been full court press on trying to get people to sign up and promising dates, and it just seems to me like we haven't been real honest on our build dates. Um, you know, later, I would disagree. Later. I'll disagree right now. This is John. Well, no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I didn't say maybe it's you because this is a great meeting and I appreciate you guys coming here because it's easier for us to inform. But I think it's some of the rep other representatives of your company that have been out there and pushing and pushing and pushing to sign people up, promising unrealistic dates that I don't think that your representations and Eric being the marketing guy should really be part of this that, hey, sign up, man. We, we got this great internet, which I have no doubt and I can't wait for it to get to town. I can't wait. Um, you know, I signed up as a business clear back in October. You know, then I was promised December and then, or November, then December and then January. And I get that it takes time and I get the Duraco and I get everything else. My whole problem is I can't get any information, nor can our other people, unless we really reach out and, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? I don't think that being informed to the citizens has been very forthcoming, yet the representation for MetroNet has been, like I said earlier, full court press to, hey, get signed up for this great thing and we're gonna have you in a month. Now we're gonna have you in six weeks. Well, everyone's asking, my, my whole thing is I know it takes time and I'm not complaining that much, a little bit, but, and, and I'm, and I'm not canceling and I can't wait till you guys can get me up and running. And if that's two months from now, it's two months from now. I just think maybe the, maybe the feet on the ground, not you construction guys, cause I know you're doing what you can do, but I think the feet on the ground of some of the uh, representation for you guys have been not real. I don't want to say honest because that's a bad word, but forthcoming on the realistic timelines, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I well, mean, let me, it, let me it, try it, to explain a little bit why that may have happened. So I do a schedule based on when our people put in for the poll applications. And I basically add about 180 days to that process before I can get on the polls. Well, then we get the ratio that kicked it back another. I don't know however many months that was, but the whole time the sales force, all these people are looking at my release dates, not taking into consideration any of that stuff. And I can't just shift my dates. They have to expire before I can move them. So they keep looking at the same dates thinking, oh yeah, I'm six weeks out. That date's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Even though my notes out to the side say, we're still waiting on polls. We're still waiting on polls. So I think they do sometimes get ahead of themselves and try to go make the sale as opposed to, you know, let's, you know, call me instead. I'm the guy building it. Call me and ask me, you know, do I think I can do it in six weeks? Nope. I don't think so. You know, but it doesn't, we're just big monster and this thing just keeps running, you know, and it's, it's all based on releases. It's all based on when we can get sales folks out there to cover you um, and getting it augmented. And there's just a lot of moving pieces and it's all based on my release dates. And if they don't read the fine print out to the side, 
then they're sometimes jumping the gun. And I, yeah. I do, I do get that. And I apologize that you might have yeah. had that happen to you. And, and yeah. the other thing is to be to be quite honest, Eric is relatively new. The other market manager went over to business development, so there was a gap. And in in a in a normal sense, we would have the market manager kind of weigh those things and let sales know that it's you know things are delayed. But Eric wasn't there, and nor was there was just a gap for a, a, and that little gap made the difference where those salespeople went out and started selling. So we apologized for that. And we didn't expect, we expected to get the polls by now, but it is, you know, we are moving as fast as we can, weather permitting, we can get this all done and, 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 you know, and, and keep this thing moving. So uh, apologize for being a little ahead of the game with the sales. Yeah. And I think everyone understands that. I think in the public now, and, and now that Eric's here, I'm guessing he's going to fix everything is what they're telling me, Eric. So you're, you're not even yeah. So, no. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, that's, I'll be that's, sure to keep you guys in the loop. Well, you know, that's that's that is my role is to make sure that um, internally all the departments are talking together, and then I'm also sharing that information. Um, and Brian, I can empathize with where you're at because, uh, to be honest, I'm going through the same thing. I'm in Leclaire. Um, I'm waiting on Metronet. We're getting it this spring, but um, the duration and things like that set it back as well. So I'm one of those that signed up in September, and I'm sitting here biting at the bit wanting service. So I, I get it. Um, and I'll be transparent with you guys and keep you guys moving forward. Thank you. I, th I think that'll certainly help. I, the biggest gap has just been, obviously there's significant public interest here and it's probably a topic on the Nevada Facebook pages about every other day, what's happening <laughs> for, for internet competitors. So, uh, I think just keeping us in the loop would be, would be helpful. Even if it's shooting an email before our council meeting every other week. So we know where you are and coming and doing this every month or so, just so we yeah. keep keep the public informed because the the council that's on here, they're the ones getting the questions. So they just want to be informed when people ask them about it. Any other questions from anybody? No, thanks for your time, guys. It really makes a big difference. Yeah. For, and we'll, now that Eric's on board with you guys, he'll keep you informed what's going on. And so will me and John. John. We just, like I said, it was, we didn't have an Eric for, we had a gap and that's when the salespeople moved in there fast. That was the issue. So, and boy, I wish I was in that. I, uh, wouldn't it be nice to have those waves and, uh, and palm trees behind you right now? Yeah, that's my back window right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not really, it's a snowstorm. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody. If that's it, we'll, you know, the Metronet people will sign off. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank all right. you all. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay. And Karen, did anyone else reach out to you about the public forum? No, I didn't have any others. Okay. And seeing no other interest for public forum, we will go ahead and close the public forum and move into old business. The first item is approve FY22 LOT worksheet with the ad hoc listed. So you should have that in front of you. The process was the same as previous years um, with the ad hoc committee that uh, reviewed all the presentations for the applicants and scored those uh, and compiled it. So that's the recommendations in front of you. And then also just so everyone is aware, um, the letters that will go out will also inform them that there might be changes to the process uh, for next year because there's been talk about, do you want to do things differently? Uh, do we want a different process? Uh, how much money, if any, is going to be allocated that way? So. Um, Luke and Brian with as a budget committee um, that will be meet starting to meet this summer um, to hammer out some of those details. So we wanted to give everyone a heads up that there may be some changes to how the process works for future years. I would move to approve the uh, worksheet. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Luke, second by Jason. Discussion. Fred, I'm on NCRC board. Do I need to abstain? I don't benefit from it financially, but I, I, I do help make decisions and guide what happens with that funding. We'll let Aaron chime in on that. Yeah, I would recommend abstaining if you are a decision maker of a board that would benefit. Okay. Any other discussion? 
Okay, seeing none, Karen will take the vote. Spence? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Eric? Aye. Hanson? Aye. Mittman? Abstain. Nielsen? Aye. Okay, then that is approved. Takes us to old business B, approve HR Green Professional Services Agreement for SRF sponsored project concept design. In the last meeting, they intended to give you some information ahead of time when we plowed through it. So before we do that again, it, would anyone from HR Green intend to address that? This is <clears throat> Teresa Stadelman. Um, I was there at the last meeting and gave you an overview of what this would include. It's concept design for six potential projects. It's essentially the initial vetting looking at uh, you know, willing landowners for these projects and make sure we have that lined up and then doing the initial investigations for things like soils, environmental and survey type items. Basically establishing feasibility and that the projects would be approved by SRF for funding. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. Jason and Barb, any further discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Sampson? Aye. Mittman? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Spence? Aye. Eric? Aye. Hanson? Aye. Okay, then that is approved takes us to Old Business C, resolution number 63, 2020, 2021, resolution declaring intent to provide economic development support to development project at 1104 6th Street. So at this time, if uh, Henry has anything uh, to add to last meeting, um, you can go ahead and take the floor. Will do. So um, I'm happy to be here tonight. I've got uh, John Augustus here. He's the uh, other Henry Corbin listed on the meeting here. So. Um, but we're happy to be here uh, to present about the uh, Briggs block, or sorry, the Briggs block. I still struggle with that, but um, and uh, to discuss the project, show off uh, what we're envisioning, uh, some floor plans. And so um, I'll go ahead and share my screen with you all. And oh, doesn't look like it's like, yeah, you can. I changed it. Try again. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll be kind of chiming in here running the slides, but I'll let John um, kind of describe the building uh, presently and then we'll take you through uh, to what we envision for the property. So um, I'll let John uh, take over here. Thanks, Henry. Uh, and this is going to be, this will be the, yeah, 1104 6th Street here, the upper story um, the bottom is finished and occupied currently. It's uh, about a 4,000 square foot uh, floor plan that's basically a blank canvas right now. Um, starting, you know, uh, nobody's been up there for 30 years or more. And right now there's about 18 inches of insulation across the entire, uh, the entire uh, floor plan up there. Um, the idea for the building would be, uh, you know, a full upper story restoration. You can see the back windows there. Henry, go right back up just a touch. Uh, those have all been, uh, they're not bricked in, but they have been plywood in the doors. There's a couple windows on the back side, but, you know, windows all the way around the outside. Uh, and then go ahead and scroll down, Henry. And turning this into uh, four, uh, four, there'd be three, uh, two bedroom, two beds, uh, and then one, one bed, one bath, uh, there as well. So, um, this is a, this is a floor plan that we came up with last year. Um, the project didn't, didn't quite go all the way through last year. So this is still what we're kind of working with. Um, it, it is 4,000 square feet. So it feels like there should be a little bit more space up there. Uh, but we did only end up with, uh, the one bedroom, one bath in the middle that would be, uh, on the 6th Street side in, uh, next to uh, our accounting building, the 1110 6th Street. Um, would like to maybe see what we can do for a little bit extra space in there, but uh, this is what we're at right now. Um, all of these would be full renovations. Um, uh, 
appliances, higher end, you know, looking for to set a tone for kind of more, a little bit higher end downtown living. Um, the Henry, let's go part of this catalyst project. Th these would be, these are other uh, projects that uh, main street programs similar to ours have, have done and completed. And this is kind of the goal of what, you know, of a look like this, where you go up there and you go, wow, that is, you know, that's really nice up, uh, upper story living and, um, Keep going, Henry. Is there a couple more? That should that should be the photos we've got there, um, and we can I can elaborate a little more on these projects. Um, so some of these photos that you're seeing here are from communities actually our size and even smaller. Um, the bottom right one is actually an Elkater, um, and uh, that is discussed a little bit. We included a housing study that Main Street Iowa conducted a few years ago, um, just highlighting a few of the communities that have uh, pursued grants like this and what they've done with it. Um, and it's been interesting to dive into that, but we pulled photos um, from communities like Lamar's. Um, we've toured um, a couple buildings. Um, the closest one um, that immediately comes to mind is actually up in Zeering. Um, and if you've been downtown there, they completely renovated the, uh, um, I can't think of the exact name of the building, but it's on the north side of their main street and uh, turned that into um, fairly nice uh, quality lofts upstairs. And so it's been done in communities um, far smaller than us very successfully. Um, so we're building, we're building off of those. Um, and these are just some very good examples of what's been done uh, through this grant program. And uh, two weeks ago, you know, we, we presented a little bit of this and got a little bit more specific here tonight with uh, showing the floor plan again. And, and two weeks ago, you'd also asked, you know, what was our specific request? Uh, right now, we're in the pre-application for this Catalyst grant. Um, the, uh, that's due at the end of the week. And right now, um, you know, kind of some of the finances on it would be, you know, looking at about $100,000 owner investment, $100,000 grant from uh, the Catalyst Iowa or Iowa Catalyst grant uh, and then uh, bank financing on the rest, but really uh, taking that, those first hundred thousand, hundred thousand dollars and, you know, get to a $200,000 figure and looking at like a 10% um, match or investment then from the city. So a $20,000 request from, from the city in this initial uh, pre-application uh, for this, uh, for the catalyst grant and 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 like we mentioned um, at the last meeting that's really structured off of the success we had through the challenge grant um, with the gatherings project and we had good feedback that um, on the city support from that project so really the ask is based off of that um, and how we came about with the ask But um, we can open it up, and um, if there's any questions on uh, specifics, John and I are happy to uh, answer them. Thanks, Henry and John. And it's just so council understands the process. So tonight is a resolution declaring intent. There would be a more formalized development agreement that would then be drafted um, at a later date. And uh, one thing that Karen and Jordan and I have discussed is residential rollback is different than commercial so that the TIF agreements may not be exactly the same once we get down into the details um, as far as uh, length to payback and things like that. So um, those are things that, that they'll work with John Danos to, to button up those details. But otherwise, the overarching concept was the same between the two grants. I would like to move for approval of this resolution that would um, show the city's support for this pre-application for the Catalyst Grant for this lovely project in downtown Nevada. Yeah, Henry. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Dean. I was going to second it, but you beat me to it. Well, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Well, I was just going to say, John and Henry, thanks for coming back and showing us, you know, this presentation. I know, obviously, we're you're not, uh, these aren't final plans by any means, but I think it's good to be able to see kind of what it is we're, we're looking at. And so I just appreciate the thoroughness and uh, yeah, I'm excited to vote yes on this. 
Yeah, I said it last time. I, I appreciate you not giving up on it, John. I, I could see what you were going for the first time, and I'm, I'm really happy to see it back here again. Yes, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, let's vote. Eric? Yes. Aye. Samson? Aye. Spence? Aye. Hanson? Aye. Mittman? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Okay, and that is approved. Thanks, Henry and John. Yep. Thank you so much for your support. And we hope to continue sharing the success of this project and uh, moving forward with it. So thank you. Okay, so that moves us into new business. First item is resolution number 64, 2020, 2021. The resolution to approve the detention pond easement and maintenance agreement by and between HV Nevada, Iowa, 1 UT LLC and the city of Nevada, Iowa. So that um, we were hoping that the company would be ready to do some sort of formal announcement now that dirt's turning and we have an agenda item on our city council agenda, but they are not. Um, however, there are public documents that um, it is high V. So further information will be coming to the public about what services will be offered, what the format will look like and all those things. Um, and we'll let the company do that when they're ready. But obviously with dirt turning, um, there's a lot of public interest in what's going on. So any, uh, we'll open it up for action and discussion. I'll move to approve. Second. Second. Brian and Barb, discussion. Okay. It's definitely exciting in the pandemic uh, to have further development in town. So it'll be um, whatever uh, it ends up as far as lines of services. I know it'll be something that is needed. So, so it says there's a lot going on out there. So with that, uh, any discussion before we vote? Okay, seeing none, let's vote. Hanson? Aye. Mittman? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Spence? Aye. Eric? Aye. Okay, and that is approved. It takes us to item B, request to reduce portion of sewer charge on utility bill from uh, Coster and Ferguson. Looks pretty straightforward for every other time we've done it. So I'd move to approve. I'll second. Okay, Jason, motion, second, Dane. Other discussion? Okay, seeing none, let's vote. Sampson? Aye. Nielsen? Aye. Spence? Aye. Eric? Aye. Hanson? Aye. Mittman? Aye. Okay, and that is approved. So that uh, takes us to report, starting with city administrator. I have nothing to report unless you guys have questions for me, I'd gladly answer. Okay, then we'll move on for my report. Uh, there's not a lot uh, Had our quarterly uh, Story County Emergency Management meeting. Um, and then the one thing that uh, I wanted to point out is we are in the last week of fill the foyer. So it's been another really successful year and that's good to see in a unique year like this with COVID that uh, that's still been a success and continued to be a community tradition. So if anyone has things they would still like to donate, they're able to do that for the rest of the week. Um, and yeah, other than that, wanted to thank everybody for their flexibility this evening uh, with especially our city clerk having a pretty sizable commute. We didn't want her to feel like she needed to drive home through what is probably the worst of the weather here in a little bit. So. Um, better safe than sorry with that. Otherwise, um, I think that's all I have to report. Any questions for me? And I guess also to remind everybody, uh, our new family edition will be arriving here shortly. So you might not reach me as quickly. So if any, if anything goes down and you need something, you can always text me. And then I know Barb is always willing to step up if something's going on too. Okay, council reports. 
Right, I meant to ask what time you planning to go in. Sometime in the middle of the blizzard. <laughs> Any other reports? Not so much part of my council duties, but uh, my community garden idea is taking root uh, with uh, Evergreen Lane at the as a part of the uh, historical society. Uh, we'll be working with them to uh, get something going here um, this uh, spring, hopefully. So good news on that front. I appreciate the pun there, Luke. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> a plethora, a cornucopia. There you go. <laughs> well, that, that's a good spot for it and good that you found a good partner. Yeah, it should. they've already had some gardening stuff going on back there and it's gonna bring people to their property then uh, give them a little bit more exposure and uh, we can get some good uh, produce out to uh, the food banks in town too. So it should be good for everybody. Thanks for keeping up with that. And well, thank you to, uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it sprung again, uh, 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 from the Wellmark Healthy um, Hometown Initiative, they kind of asked me to take it on again. So thanks to that initiative as well for, for helping out quite a bit. And with the mention of, of food banks, uh, one thing with Field of Four that I don't know if we have filled everybody else in on, we did add another partner this year. So Food at First is one of the beneficiary partners. So the original three um, with Harmony, Cubby's Covered, and the Nevada Community Covered. Those are the three that we started with. We added Food at First as one of the beneficiaries for this year. Yeah, and our steering committee tried to create a very short wish list that nobody else would need. That because we just have some we have some unique needs and the normal gifting that folks do, they assume that it's going to food, and um, our needs right now are mostly packaging. So we've had a great we've had great turnout and support. We'll be writing something about that later. Very good. I'm glad, glad that worked out. Okay, any other council reports? Okay, then now let me go through some staff here. Let's go with Park and Rec and Tim. Um, I do not have anything this evening unless anybody has any questions. Okay, thanks, Tim. We'll go to PNZ and Sean. Um. I don't got it, have anything um, other than my report. I'll answer any questions. Cancel anything for Sean. Okay. How about Marlis? We'll put her put her on the spot this time. No, I don't really have anything, but. We are going to have a, um, I, could, I guess I do have one thing, I'm going to meet with Saltec again uh, this week, and we're going to get some glimpses of some of the preliminary look of our pages. So that's going to be exciting. Very good. Okay, then thanks, Marlis. Uh, let's go to uh, Public Works and Jeremy. Good evening, everybody. Um, I didn't get my report in on time, so... I guess uh, I'm bad. Um, as far as public works goes, we're, we're, I'm super proud of everybody. We're really working together, uh, whether it be a water break or snow removal or uh, if Harold needs any help with the facility, the wastewater facility, we're all doing pretty good. Um, Harold's, Harold's got a, he's doing a good job down there running it, running the wastewater plant. And uh, we begin, we've been getting a lot of, extra stuff through the through the sewer lines that he has, he's had to work hard on getting rid of but he's doing a good job jason jason's been helping a lot with the snow removal for the streets department and the water department they've had a couple couple main breaks and they've been helping with snow removal too and uh we've been busy busy at the street department doing snow and rebuilding equipment for next year and service and stuff and the guys are out plowing right now. We're gonna plow till about eight o'clock and then come back at three, uh, get the streets opened up so everybody can go to work. But that's, I think that's all I have. Anybody got any questions for me? Thank you, Jeremy. I've had some good feedback on uh, some of the changes you've made in, in the snow removal strategy. So I know uh, that's been appreciated by folks and they've been noticing. 
we need to get we need to figure out what we're gonna do with Main Street, whether we got one contractor or I think we could do a better job, you know, if we get the snow to the to the curbs. You know, just it just two snows ago we got everything cleaned up, you know, right after the storm. And then, you know, some some business owners didn't have their snow to their curb and then we fought that on the refreeze at the curb line. And I just I wish we just need to get to it. Uh, if one person does it and gets it done and we can get it taken care of. I think that would really help. And I know Jordan and, and I think he's been talking to Henry trying to, trying to figure something out, but, but we'll get it. We'll, we'll get there. I just, you know, want to be, be able to get it cleaned up as quick as we can. And to loop everyone in on that, when uh, the downtown committee met, that was one of this, with the the construction steering committee met one of the issues was the clearing of downtown snow and the difficulties we have over and over of uh, the timing of, of how that's that's worked um, we uh, that group had uh, and staff that was part of it too had wanted to see if there's a way the city could do it and there's a bunch of legal liability things that make that difficult so one idea was to hire a contractor uh, and split the cost with main street folks so that's the idea that was um, given to the Main Street Board to check with their members and see if that would be of interest. So you may have something more to report at that time, but that's what Jeremy was alluding to. Jeremy, it looked like the, the working around those bump outs was working pretty good just in the little bit that I looked at. Is that is that the case that you have you guys have been experiencing? Are those causing any problems with snow removal? You know, I, I thought it was going to be hard, but it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Even with, you know, I plow, plow with a pickup and, and parts helps us with the Kubota and, and the little tractors, but even with our smaller big trucks and a pickup, you can follow the bump outs. You can turn, I mean, you can just follow the curb. It's like they laid out the curb with a, with a turning radius of a, of a pickup. It, it, it's really easier than, than I thought it was going to be. So That's some good engineering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 we just the, the only thing we had we just got to get the snow off the sidewalks you know quicker just get it done quicker and we can get it picked up and, and gone but it, they, they're easier than than i had anticipated them being happy birthday this week by the way too i heard it was a, a round number there yeah 30. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how old I am, not how old I act. Okay, yeah. I'm <laughs> big 5-0. It was just 30 donuts. It wasn't 30 years old. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Jeremy? Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. We'll go to public safety and Rick. Yeah. Um, uh, the last three Saturdays, we've had people come in to do some testing. So right now we... We have uh, eight uh, applicants. Uh, we're doing interviews this week, so um, I'm uh, being uh, cautiously optimistic that we'll have at least two people we can send to the Academy in May. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, after this week, then we'll do backgrounds and do all the other things that we do when we go through and vet our candidates. But that's kind of where we're at right now. And um, I want to reiterate um, what has been said already. I think Jeremy's doing a great job on the streets. Uh, I know he's, uh, he's very adamant about letting us know where people are parking that haven't taken their vehicles off the streets. So um, we've been trying to take care of that as quickly as we can. Uh, I don't want to get to the point where we start towing cars, but um, I know that when the cars aren't there, uh, the streets are able to do a much better job. And um, they've been doing really good up till now. So I, uh, I just want to give him a lot of accolades for that. He's doing a great job. That's all I got, unless you guys got questions. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Then let's go over to HR Green. Good evening. Uh, Larry did attend the SERPA meeting this week. Um, just want to let you know that uh, the city continues to bank your federal roadway funds. You have just over a million dollars in the bank right now. It's been saved up. Um, there's no projects identified for that money for the next five years. So um, by the end of 2024, you're projecting to be about $1.5 million uh, in that fund. And 
that can be used for roadway projects. It can be used for matching funds for other projects that you might partner with with the DOT. So uh, know that that money's out there, and um, that can be a nice be a nice starter uh, fund for a larger project. Uh, second update I had for you is the street projects for this year. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, get a contract with Clapsaddle Garber to do the surveying uh, for S14 north of Lincoln Highway. So hopefully when the, the weather breaks and we get some uh, at least some good melting that they can get down to the good solid ground, uh, we'll get survey out there and, and get that started. Um, we're also going to have Manats get us a couple of cores, asphalt cores of not only S14, but also of the overlay part on Lincoln Highway, just so we have a better idea of knowing what's there before we, we design our, our reconstruction and resurfacing efforts. So uh, if you see surveyors or people out there taking cores, that's, that's what's going on. So that's all I have. Okay. Council, anything for Casey? Okay, thanks, Casey. Thank you. Let's go over to Karen. Hello, um, just working on the budget and trying to get everything to match up and was able to get into the state website and um, seemed to work okay. And you will see it here in a little bit. Thanks, Karen. We'll hop over to Aaron. Good evening. I don't have anything to report tonight. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. We're glad you got to stay nice and cozy at home too and have not have to travel up. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. <laughs> it's a good thing about technology. So, uh, so I think that's it for reports. Did I miss anybody? Okay, then seeing none. Uh, just so those in the public that may be watching, we're going to adjourn the regular council meeting and then we will transition into a budget workshop. So uh, with that, we're done with our business for our regular meeting. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Dane and Barb, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, then we are adjourned from our regular meeting. Thanks for everyone who attended that. And those who are sticking around for the budget meeting will go ahead and transition there. Um, do you want to take a couple minute break or have Karen just go right into it? So, Let's keep going. Sounds good. Then Karen, you can have the reins. I gotta unmute myself first. So let's start with the, do you want me to share my screen or does everybody have the packet? I think if you can that share that, that would be good. So that way anyone that's online can see it. Okay, we'll see if I can get this. There it is. Can you see it? Yep. All right. So this, the first one is the timeline. That, that gives us a good um, timeline to know when we need to do things. And especially with the new maximum property tax hearing, um, an additional step and when we need to post and those kinds of things. So we use those as a guideline and uh, try and keep everybody on task there. Um, the next one is the departmental forms that have the equipment revolving in them. And these, what you see in this packet is just the current year and the next year, but they actually all do um, forecasting out 15 years. So these are just a couple years um, of a snapshot in time for that, just for the 22 budget. So that's what the next ones are for all the departments. Go slower in case somebody's watching. And these are actually ones you've already, the council has already approved and looked at um, a couple meetings ago. There's a lot of different worksheets that we use um, in order to incorporate into the budget. Okay. 
The next one is the capital improvement plan. And this helps us um, prepare for the upcoming projects, see where they're going to be spent out of, um, kind of gives us a feel for our debt service and what we're going to TIF and um, what will come out of operating um, budgets for water and sewer and those, those items. We work with HR Green to um, figure out the projects and department heads, figuring out what's most important and um, what's needed in the city. So that's the, another uh, tool we use. Here's the local option report that we had on the agenda again tonight that shows the itemization of the local option funds and how they'll be spent. This is the hotel motel. Um, spreadsheet. The funds from hotel motel are estimated and they're kind of inconsistent. So what we typically do is we use the balance on hand at time of budgeting to plan for those allocations. So we really look at what the balance is currently, not necessarily what we're going to get in because it's it fluctuates so much. This is the uh, tax increment financing. These are the projections that um, with all the agreements and the loans that we have out. Um, and we have to certify these seven months in advance before the funds are actually received. And it, it shows the payments and bonds payments that are due. And this is the debt service levy worksheet. It shows the bond payments that are due and helps us keep track of our obligations. This is the transfer um, worksheet. Helps us to see where the money will be transferred to and where it will come from. And the transfers have to match, obviously, or it throws our system out of whack. This is the function report um, for the budget. This is the report that you typically will see in the council packets each month um, after we've had our reconciliation and everything. So this will help us show that these numbers are imported directly into the state um, worksheet and they should all balance out. For example, if you see on page 23, that the one we're on, if you see the total for public safety total is the 2,131,140. Then when we get to the state form on page 44, it lines up with a line 11 on the budget form. So that's really how we see, we make sure that everything's matching with the state forms and the, um, our software as well. So the function reports show each department. Capital projects and then the R fund shows what we're anticipating getting from the different revenue streams that we have. And these are the new state forms. They look a little different um, because it's online. So this one is um, shows our tax levy, which in the bottom right hand corner, the 14.618, that's what we're proposing um, to certify our tax levy at. And that's what it's been for the last, um, I want to say five years. And that's, this is the notice of public hearing that we have to do for the maximum property tax. Um, and this is the one that if we had our annual percentage change up here at the top, it's 1.18, 1 1.18. 1 but if it was two or above, 
then that would require a supermajority um, pass by the council. And this will be um, the February 8th meeting. We'll ha have this on the agenda to set the public hearing and then we'll actually have the hearing on the 22nd. So these are the state forms. And that's what the notice of public hearing will look like for the proposed um, budget. Did you guys have any questions or any comments on this part of it? If you look at the, I was gonna try and go back to the budget summary on page 44. Nope, that's not it. Well, this one shows it too. This shows the negative $4,446,643. It shows in the negative. And that is basically because of the transfer for the field house, the four and a half million that we'll transfer that we have on hand and we'll transfer that, that to the project. So it looks like it's coming out of the general and it puts it in the hole, but that's really what it's what's causing that. And that's why I sent you that profit statement, the worksheet um, earlier tonight, because that breaks down each department, like the general, it shows in the negative, the 4,382,925. So if you take that 4.5 away from that, it's a positive in a little over 100,000. Does that make sense? Karen, are you saying what? I guess what I would like to know, what's what's the bottom dollar? Are we running in the black or are we running in the red? In the black. <laughs> OK, so we carry over money from this last fiscal year to the to the next fiscal year, correct? Correct. And how much are we carrying over from this last fiscal year? Well, from the, the one we're in now. What are we anticipating, right? Isn't this the for, we're for anticipating for FY twenty two about a hundred thousand dollars? Okay. So Karen, how does that compare with other years? Well, um, like in ge in general terms, is that are we? That's about normal. Okay, that's good. In this year. <laughs> yep. So when you say we're carrying over a hundred thousand. That doesn't include like projects that we're still, that maybe we've got in the works, but we just haven't bought them or purchased them, but we've got money set aside. We still have another 100,000 on top of that. The 100,000 that I'm referring to is basically the general fund because that's our, the most concern we have. It's the tightest budget because we only get most of the revenue we get from for the general fund is from property taxes and not a lot of other revenue streams come in from anywhere. 
and the others kind of take care of themselves. Like the projects, we usually have bonding or money for certain projects. So those are kind of in a different fund. Same with the TIF, the rebates and the debts, debt service. Those are kind of, they take care of themselves because we put revenue into them for those expenses that come out of them. So that's why we really kind of look at the general other than the proprietary fund. That's that's more than 100,000, but we're also saving for the um, wastewater treatment plant and also uh, anticipated water improvements too. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So do you want any more explanation for that? Or the, the profit worksheet or have any other questions? Nope. <laughs> okay. So um, the next part of it is the presentation. And I want to give Marlis a big, big, big thank you um, for revamping our budget presentation. She did an awesome job and worked um, really hard getting it done. And it looks awesome. I can't wait for you guys to see it. I'm going to kind of let it play. And if there's something that um, you have questions about, or we can go over it after, or um, just holler out and we can stop it and go back. Um, but it's it's a really nice presentation. So um, I'm anxious for you guys to see it. And thank you, Marlis. Marlis told me she was working on it. And I asked her if she didn't, what, she, what problem she had with our 1999 <laughs> looking budget presentation we normally use as a template. Oh, I can't tell you how many years I've wanted to revamp it, but it's at the last end of it and you never have time to, to do anything really nice to it. And so I was super excited when Marlis. At least it used to match our current website. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if there's no more questions, I'm going to see if I can get it pulled up here. Okay, is it showing? It's there. It's kind of, oh, there it goes. It's big. All right. I will say the department heads do an awesome job of keeping their budgets in check. And I so much appreciate their efforts as well. How much would it cost for us to get Morgan Freeman to narrate this? <laughs> Give us your best impression, Jason. <laughs> oh, no, no, that'd be ugly. <laughs>
this is a good slideshow that shows the different levies and how they're how they've changed over the last four years. This was the recent bill that uh, required us to do the maximum property tax and post it and have another hearing. The rollbacks for commercial and industrial, they all stay the same. It's the residential that fluctuates and the multi-residential is still going down. That was in the new 17 when rollbacks were changed. This shows that multi-residential, there is no uh, backfill with that rollback and so it has affected us um, quite a bit. We have quite a bit of multi-residential in town. It's like the state doesn't want you to build those types of homes. This is where we've been over the last five years. And then six, we're talking about doing the same for 22. These are just the general fund expenditures, those um, departments that are in the general fund and where the majority of our expenses come from, public safety and, and culture and rec. And as I said before, this is the revenue sources and the majority of our revenue is property taxes. I, I'm anticipating um, we do have our bank agreement is up this June. And so we'll be um, putting that out again. And I don't look for our interest rate to be near what it was, what it is now. So our interest will be a little less. This shows um, some of those cities that are same size as us where we fall. Those are the departments listed in the general fund. This shows the actuals. The, the numbers in yellow show what we have in previous years actually carried over, like the, the one at the top, 152,000, 208,000. When you asked me what we've done before, now that one year was from DuPont, but this shows the revenue sources and about the same.
Here's the revenue expense for the police department. Some of their increases are um, the computers in the cars. Those have annual fees associated with those too. The fire, you'll see a difference in the supplies and personnel. The volunteer firemen used to come out of contractual and now it's actually in with the salaries. So that's the difference in those two. One of the recs, big changes in it is the, this is the year, uh, 22 will be the year for the national softball tournament that we host. And the field house, we've just kind of based it on Gates Hall and it won't be necessarily done in 22, so. Capital fluctuates and we've also um, done our best guess as far as um, the salaries and those are still to come with the recommendation from council. You'll see a slight decrease in the personnel services there, but um, that's for the public work salary was split up between the other departments or before it was.
anticipated projects that are coming up and what will be spent in 22. Well, that is all of that. Does anybody have any questions or do you want to go back to any slides or talk about anything else? Karen, remind me about when the rollback um, is announced. Like, can the legislature currently change the rollback for this, this, this FY 21, 22 year? No. During this session? No. So they work at least a year ahead so we can right. anticipate? Yes. Okay. Hey, Karen, the, the email you sent with these slides uh, ended at the senior center slide. Um, would you be able to send the, the rest of it at some point in email form? Yes. Just so I can have it in there. So Karen, I, th I agree with you. This is a vast improvement and a really great educational tool. I think it's something that can be used in other ways to, you know, it's really informative about how city government sets budgets and makes things happen. Yeah, we'll put it up on the website. And no, like I said, Marlos did an awesome job. I so much appreciate it. Well, you also did a nice job of presenting it in a concise way, so thank you. I still think we can get Morgan for about a grand a minute, so it'd be about 15 grand. Well, that's cheaper than the challenge grant or the- Are you offering to pay for it, Jason? Yeah, out of our budget, I'll approve it. The school's budget? Yeah. Does not sound very fiscally responsible there, Mr. Sam. <laughs> I'll I'll do it for much much cheaper than that. I would rather you do it dressed as Bob Ross. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. And present it so in the captain's voice. And oh dear, where is that at? <laughs> so. Question for you, Karen. On the roll or the backfill, when does that phase out? Um, hopefully never. Okay. But I mean, they. I haven't heard much discussion last year. It really wasn't didn't come to the forefront, and I haven't seen anything on it yes yet this year. Um, in 2017, they said you'll never get any more than this that amount. Yeah. So we'll never get more, but I mean, hopefully we'll get it forever because they're the ones who changed that and took it away and promised, oh, we'll, we'll backfill you. We'll, we'll give you this money. And, you know, they already capped it. So I, I, my hope is it's probably way too hopeful, but <laughs> There, yeah. was quite a, there was quite a threat a while back. Was it 2017 or 2018 that they were even trying to repeal the cap? Yes, they were trying to do completely away with it. But I think there was enough push. And um, I mean, cities are showing how much we're losing because of the rollback that they did. And it's huge. It had yeah. quite an effect on us. And, that helped to refresh my memory because it came up the other day in the housing where there was a blip you could see and Jordan was like, or maybe, maybe it was John, somebody near me was like, what happened there? And I was like, that's the legislature changing the rollback. So you could see it in the graph, which the good thing is we've been able to keep the rate the same despite the challenges. And I think with some of the big um, industrial things that are eventually going to impact our general fund here in a few years, that will definitely help us to take some of the burden off the residential taxpayers, which is definitely a good thing to have 
on the radar. Yeah. Okay, anything else for Karen for the budget? Okay, Karen or Jordan, anything to add? Just um, for- Go ahead, sorry, Karen, go ahead. I was just gonna thank you all for thinking of me and uh, it's it's really nice to be home and not have to worry about what the roads look like. That's why I was looking at the back behind Dane thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> where is that? Well, I, I knew that Karen would just do it and not even say a word. So I'm glad Barb nudged us earlier to make sure we we're thinking of you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Karen, if it makes you feel any better, that was just something I pulled off Google. I have <laughs> That's good. I'll be glad to know in Texas it's about 50 degrees and sunny right now. Thanks. Sometimes you talk and you just shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's 34 degrees in Arizona where my parents are right now, so that's not really much better than <laughs> Iowa. Okay. Jordan, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I didn't have anything to add. I was just going to say, um, Thanks to Marlis for working on this. She did a great job, and uh, thanks for thanks to Karen for getting all the everything prepared for for the council. And the beautiful thing about Zoom is this is online, so people can watch it later. So the more input and feedback we get from the public, the better. Um, for that slideshow, I, I think the program that we're using to do this also would allow us to add audio. So. Maybe that's another thing we can try next year. Um, it, it's a lot of fun to to fool around with that program, and I think we can do more with it. And it might not be a bad idea to even take some of this later and re repost the, the budget presentation before we have the public hearing so that folks who are interested can watch it and then come um, speak on it. The, yeah. the better informed the public is on how the budget works, the better for everyone. And I know Karen mentioned putting the video on the website. I mean, even if it was something as simple as like some like kind of elevator music in the background or something like, would that be a possibility without being too much time and effort? Karen remembers, but I had music going with it. And then we thought it was going to be at a meeting where she might want to talk. So we took the music out. So we can add music yet. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even, awesome. like that. even if you took what was done tonight, because then you have Karen given the little bits of input along the way might be good. Maybe we can find a Morgan Freeman voiceover and do it that way. They do have those sound boards you can do. You might be able to have Siri talk in his voice. Doesn't she do things like that? Maybe it's a download. Yeah, possibly. Jason, that might be the best background. It is the best, best background you've had all night. Do we do a budget meeting in auto-tune? Is that a good idea? <laughs> Well, then all gonna, I have to do is call T Pain. <laughs> if you're going to put it to music, Paradise by the Dashboard Lights, really the only song I know that's <laughs> minutes long. <laughs> well, with that, it sounds like we're about out of business for tonight. So, anybody have anything uh, to add before we sign off? Uh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got to add. Okay. And thanks, everyone. Thanks, Karen, for all your work on it and uh, Jordan and Marlis putting it together. So we'll sign off and see everybody next time. Right, Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Have fun tomorrow, Brett. Yeah, Brett, go get them. Congrats. Yep. Go to yeah. bed right now. Uh, we'll be shortly. <laughs> go shovel first. <laughs>